What's up guys, Hamilton here, and today I want to talk about GameStop stock GME. Unless you have zero interest in investing or have been hiding under a rock these last weeks, you'll have heard about the stock's meteoric rise. Now, mainstream media would have you believe that the stock's rise was engineered by the efforts of the infamous subreddit Wall Street Bets, but in fact, it was actually a result of Mr. Beast. You see, a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Beast posted this video where he bought out the entire stock from five stores, one of which was GameStop. Up next, we're gonna buy everything in GameStop. This is going to be fun. I'll just cut to the chase. I wanna buy everything in the store. Those of you that follow me on Twitter will note that I called what would happen after this. Okay, this is obviously a joke, so what really happened to GameStop? Why is the stock mooning and how high could it go? Let's dive in to find out. On January 21st, 2021, Citroen Research put out a video on five reasons to be short GME, referring to it as a failing mall-based retailer. So let's just get right to the five reasons why we believe it's going back to 20. The reasons were as follows. One, high short interest in the stock. Original, I know, right? Two, declining sales volume in physical locations. Three, valuation on EBITDA multiple. And four, the other side of the trade. I'm assuming he thought it was only Wall Street bets that were long here. Finally, dilution assumption. If the company raises money, it will have to sell stock. Now, Citroen wasn't the first to think GameStop was a dud. In fact, they were merely jumping on the hedge fund bandwagon, which they even cited as their very first reason to be short the stock. <laughs> Wall Street had a massive short interest in the stock as far back as 2019. The GameStop bears assumed next generation consoles would bring an end to the disc sales, and with that and the general death of retail, they began to make comparisons to Radio Shack and Blockbuster. That's not to say they were wrong, shareholders were losing faith in GameStop's management as they continued to give up their position of strength to Amazon. In a letter to the board, one investor wrote, The unfortunate reality is that Amazon, not GameStop, bought Twitch in 2014. Instead, in 2014, GameStop started buying wireless store assets. And in 2017, Amazon, not GameStop, bought Gamesbox. Shareholders are right to worry. But the shorts got carried away and pushed the stock's market cap below the value of cash it held in its balance sheet. By August 2019, GameStop's market capitalization was hovering around $310 million, whilst it was estimated that GameStop had cash on hand in excess of $480 million. In steps Michael Burry. Michael Burry, the guy from the big short who made a killing shorting subprime mortgage bonds. Burry went long over 4% of GameStop, attempting to kick off an epic short squeeze. So what was Burry's bull case? The most prevalent bearish case that the digitalization of the video gaming would lead GameStop to bankruptcy was overestimated by some, and the transition from physical sales to digital sales didn't occur as fast as the market thought it would. The PS5 and next generation Xbox launched with support for physical discs. Bari saw that shorts were overconfident and overexposed. He saw that future cash flows of the business were in excess of its current market cap, and he wasn't the only one. Enter Ryan Cohen, activist investor and co-founder of Chewy, which he sold to PetSmart for over $3 billion. In 2020, Cohen spent about $76 million to buy 9 million shares in the video game retailer. Cohen paid about $8.40 per share on average and held a roughly 13% stake in the company. Cohen penned a letter to GameStop's bosses in November 2020 criticizing them for not keeping pace with the video game industry shift to digital streaming, mobile, and gamers buying from mass retailers and online rivals. The entrepreneur and his team also called for GameStop to conduct a strategic review, evolve from a physical retailer into a technology company, prioritize its most profitable retail locations, and build an e-commerce ecosystem. In his letter, he openly outlined his investment thesis. It is important to reiterate that we have devoted a significant amount of time to analyzing GameStop's assets, balance sheet, corporate governance, opportunity set, and positioning within the sector. Our investment thesis was predicated upon a few core conclusions, including the gaming industry is experiencing explosive growth with the global gaming market expected to be 174.9 billion this year and reach 217.9 billion by 2023. Two, GameStop has valuable assets, including a strong brand with a large customer base and 55 million power-up members. Despite GameStop losing substantial market share to forward-looking competitors, the company can still emerge as the market leader and the ultimate destination for gamers if the board can set a credible strategy for capturing growth opportunities. 
Finally, in December 2020, Hedgeye retail pro analyst Brian McGough announced GameStop as one of his investing ideas. In his report, he said that GME should at least be valued like other content burst distro in battle structurally pressured retailers. On our numbers and those kind of retailer multiples, we said it was worth a range of $25 to $35. And later, in response to Citroen's short thesis, Brian added, with new management team making changes and Ryan Cohen aiding strategic direction, there's a real turnaround chance. That's a $100 plus opportunity. $100 would only be about one times our 21 sales estimate if this can be a powerful retailer, much more than a perceived seller of game discs in a huge and growing category of gaming. We're not saying this is what will happen, but it is a real possibility and the odds of that have been rising with Cohen becoming more involved. All in all, this led to the mother of all short squeezes as investors piled into GME. But what does this mean? Short sellers borrow shares of an asset they believe will drop in price in order to buy them after they fall. If they're right, they return the shares and pocket the difference between the price when they initiated the short and the actual sale price. If they're wrong, they're forced to buy at a higher price and pay the difference between the price they set and its sale price. The short squeeze occurs when the stock jumps sharply higher, forcing traders with short positions to buy the stock in order to prevent further losses. Their scramble to buy only adds to the upward pressure on the stock's price. In the case of GameStop, short interest was and still is estimated to be over 140% of its float, which is important to note because the short interest exceeds 100% of the shares outstanding, it takes less money to move shares because each buy order represents a greater percentage of the capitalization. The speed with which GME's share price rose, capitulated shorts and accelerated the move upwards, exacerbating the issue as even the biggest players were forced to cover. So much so that hedge fund Melvin Capital blew up, losing 30% in one week and was forced to take a 2.75 billion investment from Citadel and Point72. Finally, we have the rise of the retail investor. Now, mainstream media seems to be following the lazy narrative of crediting Wall Street bets and its army of retail traders at the long GameStop. Whilst I don't doubt that these longs have had a significant impact, I wouldn't say they're solely responsible. As world-class investor Keith McCullough would say, on his macro show, none of this would have happened were it not for the current market conditions of quad 2 US dollar inflation. But how can retail investors generate enough buying power to move a stock? Well, with strength in numbers and leveraging call options. You might be saying, so what, they're buying far out of the money options that can't affect the actual stock price. But what investors must remember is that someone is on the other side of those trades selling those call options. Just know that if the sellers of those call options want to hedge their risk, they must buy shares to ensure they have something to deliver if the stock runs. So the volume of call options bought by retail investors further exacerbated the issue as call sellers were forced to buy more shares to hedge their position. To sum it all up, the smart money saw that GameStop was a value play. The involvement of activist investor Cohen shifted expectations of a turnaround and the high level of short interest in a raging bull market culminated in the perfect storm, which is blowing up hedge funds. We're now seeing a rising backlash from Wall Street who blames retail traders for the blow up, but in reality, this is what happens when the Fed makes a money printer go boom. That's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please smash that like button to help me get my channel bigger.